Take some time and savor in his presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. time to live.
Take them by the hand and tell them you are in the presence of the living word today. Come on, if you're going to thank them, just go on and thank them and give them a praise. For you. Come, glory to God. Hallelujah. When you're going through, you praise God. Oh. Thank you for what we're about to receive. Thank you. You are the living word. Bread from heaven. Thank you that as we pull up to your table, give us good appetites. in this house today. We rebuke, we rebuke every hindrance. Claim that you are Lord to the glory of God. Jesus, it's you. It's you, Jesus. God, it's you. Yeah, you the living word. <laughs> What a friend we have in you. I'm not going to start it all over again because it's too late. Ooh. Say with me, t timing matters. Timing matters. Timing matters. Timing matters. Timing matters. In our last lesson, we left off talking about never give up. The scripture gives us a picture of someone focusing on her desired outcome or her miracle. And I didn't finish reading the whole thing. And amazingly, that's what God said, take up from and carry it on down and then move into the whole issue of timing. There's going to be a good Why you're not getting it is because of, of timing issues. You don't understand time. First, you have to understand who you are in time and what God made you to be so that you aren't controlled by something other than the greatest form of time that he has for you. That'll make sense later. But the point is timing matters. And many times we miss it because we're not on time. We're not on time. We're not, we're not aware of the time. Uh, uh, uh. You, you, can, you can look at the clouds, but you still can't discern the times. You have to know the time. If you will turn, our first scripture is Luke 18, 1 through 8. And this is where we left off at. Last week, the 
Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That will preach all by itself. Because we got people that's losing heart. But I believe if you're praying, you won't lose heart. Whoa. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. He was an ungodly man. But he was in a place of authority. Wow. Wow, that said a lot. Now, there was a widow in that city. There was this ungodly judge, and there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, get justice for me from mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself. That means she kept coming to him until he started talking to himself. And sometimes you need to trouble stuff so much until... Till they make the other person start talking within themselves. You don't go away because you keep on bringing it up. Amen. Though I do not fear God nor regard man. That's what he said to himself. He was puffing his own self up. I don't fear God or regard man. He's talking to himself. But see, what prompted his statement was that something had had flipped his switch. Yet, everybody say yet. yet. Because this widow troubles me. She troubled him. She troubled him when he wasn't sitting on the bench. When he was at his quiet time. And that's what God will do. He will take care of it while you somewhere else and they somewhere else. He'll trouble them in that place and, 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 and make it affect you in your place. I will avenge her, he said, troubles me. I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Yeah. That means she's going to wear me down. Yeah. Some things you need to keep pursuing until you wear it on down. Yeah. We give up too quick. Yeah. And you stop short of your miracle because you don't persevere in it. Right. I'm going to give you some more. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge says, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night? And then God, in this lesson, God, it went on to say, say, say I know that's a good story, but, but let's consider God. He's better than, than the judge in this story. And he said, he said, and then the Lord said, hear what the unjust just said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? Who are the elect you are? Won't he avenge you when you cry out and, 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 and you won't wear him down? He'll just go on and avenge you. Though he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Speedily is a time word. It's a time word. Yeah. It means something that should take a long time for it to happen. He's going to speed it up. Yeah. Some of you need some stuff to speed up. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. That's a time word. That's why God said go back to that one because it's going to give leverage to the next message. That, that speed word kind of hit. Nevertheless, here's the overriding picture. When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith in earth? Faith for what? To believe God for miracles. And believe God to speed up some stuff that should take longer. But you don't have long life to pay for all the stuff that you're in debt for. You don't need to take out a 30-year mortgage in your 60s. Oh, I, I guess I said some y'all y'all. Uh, you don't need to keep incurring debt, and some of the stuff you got, you need for God to speak speedily over it and avenge it. You know, debt is an enemy. You got to treat it like an enemy. 
Oh, no, y'all, y'all, y'all so used to it, you, you sleeping in bed with the enemy. You've got to treat it like an enemy. And you won't get rid of it until you say, God, avenge me of this. Does that make sense? Do you get that mindset? Let me go on to time and matter. Then the woman pushed for her Kairos time. She pushed for her Kairos time. Her Kairos time. And I'm going to give you definition of a couple things just right now. She pushed for her Kairos time. How do we know she pushed for it? Because she kept coming back. And, 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 and the judge testified of her that, that she will weary me down. So she pushed for her speedily. She pushed for her speedily. And then the Lord said, won't I do the same? I'll do the same. And I'm better than that unrighteous judge because I am a righteous God. Let me explain it this way. The ancient Greeks had a dual concept of time. Kronos and Kairos. Kronos and Kairos. Both of them speak to a specific type of time. Kronos refers to clock time. Time that can be measured in seconds, minutes, hours, and years. We use it in words like chronological. That means after Monday comes Tuesday. After Tuesday comes Wednesday. And as long as it, time moves forward, the days will repeat in successions of seven. Amen? Amen. That's chronology. When you trace time back, you trace the chronology of when things happen. But there is a, 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 a better time that the believers ha- are, are, are privy to. And it's called Kairos time. Kairos is qualitative. That means the quality of this time is weightier than Kronos time. Because something can happen in a Kairos moment that will blow up Kronos time or Kronos. So Kairos is qualitative. It measures moments but not just any moment, the right moment, the opportune moment, or even the perfect moment. Kairos moments occur when divine favor meets divine opportunity. Write that down. You want divine favor and divine opportunity to collide. And when they do, they deliver something powerful to you as far as a miracle manifestation. When divine favor meets divine opportunity, that's personal. Did everybody write that down? Notice that all of it is divine. It is God executing. But it is initiated by your faith. He won't do anything until he finds faith for it. And you keep just wanting him to do it anyhow. And it doesn't happen until there is faith for it. Woo. That's why when Jesus comes back, he's looking for one thing. If, is there faith in the earth? Do I have something to grab a hold to? Can I put a handle on the believer with something? 
The scripture records it like this, Galatians 6 and 9. And it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Put your hand on your, yourself and say, don't be weary. Don't be weary. In, doing good. in doing good. Amen. Amen. All right. He said, now, 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 now. And then it says, for, that means if you can endure this first part of the, 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 the statement, then you got a four coming. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Do is a time word. Speedily is a time word, and do is a time word. And I want to tell you today, you do some stuff. It's a time word. Due season is a kairos moment. It's not a chronos moment. It's a kairos moment. Because he said, keep doing good until you hit an interruption. The interruption is kairos. That means when you've been believing for something for a while, all of a sudden you don't know the day, nor the hour, nor the moment, nor the second, but it just shows a whoosh. And it's with you. We call it supernatural blessing. Sometimes they surprise us. Anybody want to get a surprise? Can anybody say, interrupt me today, Jesus? Interrupt. Jump into my time. Jump into it and interrupt with a Kairos manifestation. That's the miracle. At the cemetery, on most gravestones, they don't have your whole obituary. They have just a dash that indicates your chronos time. But after your last death date, you are into a different set of time. And that's what people don't live for, that last date. The first one we celebrate every year, happy birthday to you, or happy birthday to you. And you just jump and shout in your chronos. But it's that last date that's the greatest because it means you are in a different set of time that's really out of time. Are you out there? And we live from, 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 from date to date. Dash. But we don't think about that last date. <laughs> when you join another place where it ain't Kronos time, but everything is perpetually in the now. It's, close. It's, it's kairos time. That means in a place of fullness, everything is met. Every need is met. You don't want none. You don't desire none because you got everything. But I want to tell you, in the dash between the date, God can deliver what's on the other side of the last date inside of your dash. You don't have to die to get it. <laughs> you can have it in this life. Then you can get really get excited about, this is bad, but wait till I get over there. It's, it's even better. Are y'all with me? That's a good reason to tell people to get saved. As blessed as you are, the biggest treasure is still over there. Ooh. You see, you get excited about a little stuff, you get none of it. That ain't done. Just say, thank you, God. That's bad. It's just a foretaste of glory divine. It's come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
reason why it's Kairos time, the, 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 the hymn that him just put it like this it being in, 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 in the song. He said, when we've been there 10,000 days, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing your praise than when we first begun. Because day one is just like day 10,000. You still got more days ahead of you, but you can't count what's ahead of you because there's no count there. Why would you count? You don't need to clock because you're not in chronos. You're not moving towards second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven. You're just in the place. And if we could get people to understand what's on the other side of the last date, maybe they would come and give their life to the Lord for real. And there is a last date. How many of you know there's a last date? How many of you know you got one? You living in the dash now. <laughs> and the dash is all you got. This is not a dress rehearsal for your life. <laughs> You're not off stage looking at yourself on stage. You it. You the main character. This is all you got. Now you can commiserate over every day or you can enjoy this chronos praying for interruption in the kairos that gives you a foretaste of what you going to have forever with Jesus. Are, are y'all out there? This thing messed with me till I couldn't sleep well the other night. I kept thinking about, oh my God, God, God. God, God, this, this is bad. If we really get people to start looking at stuff for real, then they will really be Christians. They will really walk. They will really do what they need to do because they, they realize that, that this ain't all there is. Remember that Jesus doesn't live in time anymore. He stayed around for 33 years to do what he needed to do in Kronos so he could deliver some Kairos to us. In Genesis, the Lord separated light and darkness and called it day. Through that act, God created Kronos time. He fashioned time into existence, yet he lives in eternity. God is not in chronological time. That's why he never late. <laughs> and you say, oh God, you made me nervous. He didn't get nervous. I'm sweating, God. Oh, my back is against the wall. Okay, God, you're going to have to come through. I don't know. I'm saying if you die, it's still not too late for God to do something about it. Some people in Scripture die. But he jumped out of time, into time, and said, live. Ask Lazarus. Ask the widow named son. Was he too late? No, he's not too late. So your death ain't even God's finish. <laughs> You're not out there. He never late. He jumps right on in. You get nervous. You fall out. You get anxious. But he not late. The same is true of you. You are eternal. You are eternal. Your spirit man is eternal. In fact, you are an eternal being who lives outside of the confines of time with God. According to Ephesians 2 and 6, you own the earth, but you, 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 you live in differently. You really live in large, and you don't know it. You live in big, and you don't know it because of, because of where you're sitting. And, and, and Ephesians 2 and 6 says, says, you were seated in heavenly places when you received 
Jesus Christ. As we were raised up together and made us sit. How? What's the next word? How? Together? In where? In who? So where Jesus is sitting in eternity, you are seated there in eternity. When did it happen when you got saved? (laughs) Jesus said, sit down with me. Sit down. So you are the only things on earth that have two residences at the same time. One where you lay your flesh and one where you sit down. I started to say sit your butt. You sit down. We live day in and day out in Kronos time. And then sometimes without warning, we get pulled into eternity. The effects of infinity. There are special occasions in history when God overrides the will of man and creates a kairos moment. He makes a divine exception to the rule, defies the laws of physics, and he interrupts the normal direction of history. He interrupts it. And you need your history interrupted. Don't miss your kairos moment. Most people right now are concerned about even obsessed with Kronos time, pursuing what's trendy, what's in, and struggling to be relevant. These are all Kronos concerns, and yet it's not Kronos that changes us. It's the interruptions in our Kronos that changes us. The moment you got saved, there was an interruption in your life that changed you. Are you there? Instead, we should keep our ear attuned to God, the Lord's voice, so that we notice when when he interrupts at Uh, time and space and does something extraordinary. Let us not get so caught up in what's hip and miss what's trending in the Holy Spirit. There's something trending in the Spirit. It ain't a twisted hairstyle. Oh God. It ain't a hair length. It ain't even special glasses. Here's an example as it relates to miracles. You make a Kronos decision, and all of you make a Kronos decision. You made them. Here is one. You made a Kronos decision to buy a house. And most of us, because you want the the note to be something that you can almost breathe with, so you won't be house rich, And poor at the same time. You go for a 30-year mortgage. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you ever had a 30-year mortgage? 30 years. I'm not going to ask you when you started it. But I have 30 years. 30 years. Don't be ashamed to throw your hand up. You guilty as you can be. And if you... Deal with them people downtown, quaking. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you, you might go for a 15 and pay an extra $1,000 a month. But you're really going to have to stay home then. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where you going? Home? <laughs> Where you eating out at? In my kitchen? <laughs> is, is anybody listening to me? Listen to Pastor to that. You made that decision in Kronos time because 30 years is Kronos. 
What if God says, I want you to start believing me to interrupt your 15 or 30 year and pay it up speedily? Come on, come on, come on. Or pay it off. See, that's Kairos. When he jumps in the middle of 30 years and say, 10 and out. 8 and out. 7 and out. Oh, I dare you, after you sign all 500 sheets of the closing documents, <laughs> to show up at the bank and say, God said, not 30, not one year, not six months, not nine months, but in less than a week, he said, here's the money to pay it off. That's Kairos. But when the Lord comes back, will he find faith in the earth? He needs something to grab a hold to so he can deliver something to you more than what you just expect normally. Because you just set on marching toward Krona. I got to do this when? I got to do this until when? See, 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 faith cometh by and hearing by the so as this word is coming, you ought to get faith to believe in, 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 in. I want my mortgage to have a hemorrhage. Yes. I want there to be a failure in it. Yes. And you know, God can do something crazy. There was a whole set of people over in, in Canada. I said, Lord, have mercy, I'm on the border, and it didn't happen. A whole set of people who owed American Express thousands of dollars that they would have been paying for years into the future. In one decision, they dismissed all of them. And here I am in Detroit. Lord, did I miss the time when you told me to get across the bridge? <laughs> Am I telling the right pastor? Did I? Dismissed all of it. I'm talking about millions of dollars. I think I heard a noise from Canada that day. <laughs> American Express. So don't sit here like it don't happen. I wish I could get the church to believe. Some of y'all got a frozen turkey as a bonus. Or something nominal. There was an employer in, in New York. I just, I just heard about that. He had staff people and he gave him bonuses. It's Kairos. Your paycheck is Kronos. Yes. Yes. And not as much Kronos. <laughs> as you need. I'm sorry, Chris. Chris just laid it over there. As you want to see, you want more Kronos in that check. He gave his staff. Now, this is the lowest Christmas bonus still. $50,000. Somebody said, I work for the wrong people. <laughs> that was the lowest bonus. They ranged from fifty to Somebody say Kairos with me. Kairos. Would 50,000 be a good interruption for some of y'all? Yeah. 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 Let me go on. You're not even excited about this. I'm, try I'm trying to show you what's possible. 
Because Jesus said, when I get back, I want to find 50,000 kind of faith in the earth. Will I find faith in the earth to believe for the stuff that's yours because of where you sit? How you sitting in the lap of the, the son of the king uh, uh, of God and, 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 and you don't have what's in the family treasury. There's nothing wrong with a traditional mortgage except it need to be paid. But Lord, can you pay it early? I want you all over the room to write down. I will pay my bills off earlier than expected. All of them. I will also not add to them. <laughs> and put a date by. I will pay them off early. Speak to your house and say, I'm going to keep you, but I don't want to keep paying on you. Speak to your car. I'm going to keep you, but I don't want to keep paying on you. And I don't want anybody to roll you away from me either. Come on, come on. Let's cover everything that the devil wants to do. I told the Lord to take the debt away, and they, told, they took the car away. You keep doing what you're supposed to do. Obey what you said you would do. No, I'm going to stop paying because I'm believing God to, to pay for it. They ought to come take it. <laughs> keep your agreement. But stand in a kingdom place and, 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 and tell God, Jesus, when you get back, you're going to find some faith. Here it is. You'll miss your Kairos moment if you judge by Kronos time. If you think everything is in chronological, chronological time, then you will miss Kairos moments. You won't expect them. You must expect them. What you want to see, start expecting to see it. Stop giving verse to F, voice to everything that is negative in your life. Start giving voice to what you want to see. Because what you give voice to, you will constantly see it. I keep telling you that. And you keep giving voice to it. You know, such and such. You know, such and such. You, you know, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Before you say anything. Before you make yourself release it. Shut up. Line up with that word. Wow. Kairos moments are marked by three things that speak to the miraculous. Be on the lookout for them. Number one, acceleration. What did I say? Things that normally take years will happen suddenly. An example from scripture, and if you can see it in scripture, you can have it in your life. It's, it's a story about Nehemiah in Nehemiah 6.15. And it says, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul, in the 52 days, in 52 days, Nehemiah, who was released from captivity, sent back to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem, something that would take years. He did it in 52 days. Somebody say Kairos. Kairos. So one of the things that symbolize or is significant or or, 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 or points to Kairos is acceleration. 
That's why I mentioned about paying off the mortgage early. That's acceleration. You got 30 years, but you paid it off in five. How many of you know what, can, can you even imagine what you could do with 25 years of, of mortgage payments? That's why when kids go to school, I want them to get scholarship, go on somebody else's money. That's Kairos too. Number two, unusual occurrences. Unusual occurrences. Out of the norm. Things that never happen will occur against ridiculous odds. We see this in 1 Samuel 14, 6 through 15. I'll just move as fast as I can. Anybody getting blessed yet today? 6 through 15. And, and, and here is the reading. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. That's faith. Nothing restrains the Lord from saving by, 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 by many or few. He, he can use a lot of people and use a few. In this case, I'm going to see that you get it. How many people is it? How many is in this scripture? How many? Don't be afraid when you know the answer, shout out. <laughs> Two. Jonathan and his. So, yeah, so you don't have to be royalty to, to get something done. You can be a servant. Oh, boy, I said something right there. <laughs> I hope y'all got that. <laughs> so his armor bearer said to him, he encouraged Jonathan. Yeah. Now, this is Saul's son. He said, do all that is in your heart. Go then. Here I am with you. Because two are better than one. Come on. You're trying to do it all by yourself when you need to get out your pride and ask for help. Or if you're with somebody that has a plan, say, I'm with you on that. Because I understand that the Lord works with a lot or a few. Yeah. Woo. So you have to know the will of God. So when somebody with you that knows the will of God and know what God has done, then they can ex encourage you in the word of God. Yeah. That's why you don't need good friends to say, y'all, come on, man. <laughs> Two can also go to hell together, too. Ooh, let me go back to Jonathan and armor bearer. Then Jonathan said, very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say thus to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say, come up to us, come on, bring it, bring it, then we will go up. For the Lord has delivered them into our hand, faith in words. Yes. Were they delivered yet? No, but he said, the Lord will deliver them yes. into our hand. Will the Lord find faith in the earth? Come on, are y'all there? Yes. And this will be a sign to us. So, so, so both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming. And of the holes and where they have hidden. Then the men of the garrison called to Jonathan and the armor bearer and said, Come up to us. Ooh. If they say, Come up to us, it's only two of us. Come on, man, let's get into the fight. Ain't the word of God bad, y'all? And we will show you something. They said, come on up here. We're going to show y'all something. We're getting ready to kick y'all tail all over every which way but look. Come on up here. They didn't know that 
The two had three times three times three times three times. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me. For the Lord has delivered them into the hand of Israel. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan. And he came after him. His armor bearer killed them. The first slaughter which Jonathan and his, everybody say, the first slaughter. That Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within about half an acre of land. Verse 15 said, and there was trembling in the camp. Come on up to me. And there was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among some of the people. The garrison and the raiders also trembled. And the earth quaked so that it was a very great. Everybody holler Kairos. Kairos. Unusual, Unusual. Occurrence. occurrence. Two against 20. At first, but then a quake hit the land. Guess who did that? Oh, you ought to be encouraged because you keep looking at yourself. We too few. You just enough to get the job done. Come on, come on, give yourselves a hand. It's just enough of you to get the job done. I'm not done yet. Stop clapping like I'm finished. Number three, supernatural intervention. I'm almost done. Oh, God. In this season, there will be things that come about in ways that make no earthly sense. We can see an example of this in Judges 6 and 7. I'm just citing it. Write it down in your note. It's where Joshua marched around Jericho and all they had was lamps, lights, and 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 and, and, and trumpets and 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 and, 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 and pictures. All they did was make noise and brought the walls of Jericho down. Making noise. That's why when you come up here and you don't make no worship noise. You don't want no walls to come down. We ain't building no walls. All through scripture, everywhere they went, they, they only build up walls to, 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 to restore. Walls in scripture that were built to what Nehemiah did was to restore what was there. But everywhere else where there was some enemy places, he knocked them down. Oh, oh, oh. Ending. Say ending. Turn to somebody and say, Pastor, ending. <laughs> he has placed eternity in your hearts. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, He has made everything beautiful. And in parenthesis, other translation, I just put the other words that other translation replaces beautiful with in, in parenthetical note or in parenthesis for you. And it means he has made everything appropriate in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. You can't find out, but you know he's working because you are a recipient of that work. God made us spiritual and natural beings, being more spiritual than natural. There is a longing for eternity as that is where we came from. In heaven there is no chronos time, 
just now existence. In our natural, we can operate in the supernatural based on who we are. Because eternity is in us. Eternity is in you. So therefore, we can focus on kairos and not chronos. Where there is supernatural interruption. And with that, I say, interrupt me, God. Interrupt my day. Interrupt my agenda. If there's something you're going to deliver, interrupt it. Jump into it. Push stuff back. Push stuff forward. Push stuff out the way. Make stuff disappear. Interrupt. Interrupt my thinking. Some miracle things that would happen to you if you could just get into your head. Interrupt your unbelief. Interrupt your doubt. Interrupt your looking at everything around you and, and, and those things start speaking to you so they cancel your faith. Interrupt my vision of what's around me and give me a vision of heaven. Make that vision large enough for me to frame my life with. I can't see how the balls is hanging there, but I believe they there. By faith. Blessing to you in Jesus' name. My God. Did anybody get anything that's going to help them? Anybody believing for their Kairos moment? I, I, I want you to interrupt some stuff, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a word to us today. Thank you for a word today that will help our hearts. Help us to move into places we need to move into. Remember, Pastor said two is better than one. If you partner with the Lord, that's automatically two. And you're hooked up with somebody greater than you. Thank you, Lord. All over the room, slip up your hands. I want you to just cast something out into the element. You just say, you don't have to say it loud, just start believing for it. Whatever you want God to move speedily in. Speedily. Due season. Now. Timing. My time. The right time. Interruption. Breakthrough. Break in. Break out. <laughs> oh, you got a vocabulary user. Tell God that's what you want to happen. In Jesus' name. Now put them hands together and thank Him that you know we heard. Come on, thank Him like you know we heard.
Sherry, what would you do if he said, you totally healed and you won't feel the pain after the day? What would you do? Oh, God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you, I'm scared because I'm Give him a good praise all over this house. 